Hello and welcome back to my channel, Dr. Magnesium, with me, Dr. Lee Keegan. And today I'm just going to do a quick video on alcohol avoidance and the WISH principles, which is a set of principles which I've, I've developed myself over the last few months. So I have given up drinking now for about, six, I think it's over six months, coming close to seven months now. Um, if you look back through my videos, it explains why I give up drinking, the reasons why I give up drinking. Um, just didn't like the person I was basically when I was drinking. I didn't like the fact that it was robbing me of my weekends and family time. And it, I, I realized that I developed a problem over the years of depend alcohol dependence. Um, every weekend, every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday, really, it was just repeating the cycle over same, over same, over same, over weekend, every every just going on and on, month on end. Um, my level of drinking was increasing within that time. I was drinking more alcohol. And I just didn't want to do it anymore. I just felt like it was time to stop. Um, it, it can be difficult at times to stop drinking. I, I know anybody who's got an issue with drinking in the past would would know that it can be difficult to stop drinking. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Nobody would drink, probably. Um, but, yeah, it's, I, I've used techniques such as I, I continue to socialise, which I'll go through my wish principles in a minute, but... I've continued to socialise over Christmas. I've I, I drink alcohol free lager a lot of the time now because I, I like the taste of, of lager and it was it was my favourite drink, still is my favourite drink probably. So I've continued to drink zero beers and there's a large range of zero beers out there now. Most places you go have a, have a good range. Um so it's not that difficult really to to still go out, to still socialise. It gets a bit more difficult towards later in the night when people have had a few more drinks and they're getting a bit more drunk and it, it is i'm not gonna lie it's difficult to be around people who are who are heavily intoxicated who have had a good few drinks when you're not drinking yourself it's difficult to tolerate people become repetitive and then the, the worst side of people tends to come out the, the more drink that they have so it, that part can be difficult i'm not gonna lie but i've continue to socialize i haven't let it ruin my life not drinking i've continued to be social be the person that i was really um so i found that okay so yeah th there's plenty of stuff out there so i'm going to reiterate my wish principles now which is a set of principles that i've developed myself over the last few months um i don't i'm not trying to make money off this i'm not trying to um use this to sell anything to 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 promote myself on my channel this is just principles that i think can help people so it's it's called the wish principles w i s h so w is why you've got to establish why you want to stop drinking what's your reason for wanting to stop drinking identify problems that alcohol is causing in your life and um, problems that's caused in the past for me every time i've ever been in trouble in my life it was alcohol related from teenage years right through to my early 40s. It, it, it's always related to all, and most arguments I've ever had with my partner, most trouble I've ever been in in my past has always been alcohol related for me. So people have their own experiences of alcohol. People have their own experiences of the problems that alcohol has caused within their own life. So everybody has their own specific reasons. What you've got to do is identify why, why you want to stop, what trouble, alcohol's cause for you, what problems alcohol's cause in your life. The I is to recognise that alcohol, alcohol addiction or drinking too much alcohol is not an illness. It's no matter what they tell you, no matter what AA tells you, no matter what these groups say, it's not an illness, it's a choice. You always have the choice. Nobody opens your mouth and pours a drink down your mouth. It's always you. You're always that person that chooses to take that drink. No matter what the reason, no matter what the triggers are, no matter what the emotional um, the, the emotional impulses are that make you drink, it's still you that's drinking. It's not an illness. You haven't got cancer. You haven't got heart disease. It's, it's a choice. You, you're addicted to a drink or to alcohol, a drug, and you choose to put that drink in your body. Nobody else chooses. I'm not saying it's easy to stop drinking. I'm just highlighting that this is not an illness. So that's the I. So you've got why illness, it's not an illness. And S is it's important when you stop drinking to continue to socialize. 
So if you isolate yourself, lock yourself away, deny yourself of any pleasure that you have in life, you're not going to stick to it. It's basically going to be unachievable to stop drinking. If everything in your life revolves around alcohol and you cut everything in your life out and sit in a house on your own, it's not going to work. You might stop drinking for a week, you might stop drinking for two weeks, a month, three months, but the second you get back out and you get yourself back in that environment, you're going to start drinking again unless you address these other issues that you've got as to why you're drinking. There's um, techniques, the AVRT techniques, which I've gone over in previous videos. You can look back through them, they'll help you. But this is just my principles that, that I'm going through at the minute. And then H, which is the last one, hobbies. So you've got to develop hobbies. It's kind of like socialising really, but you've got to develop hobbies around not drinking so whether that be you want to start climbing mountains walking up hills you want to play a, a musical instrument then these you, hobbies that you don't automatically identify with alcohol again don't lock yourself away some of these hobbies might might involve going to a pub or might involve going to a place where people are drinking that's fine but you've got to continue to keep yourself interested keep give yourself a purpose in life whether that be fitness goals or whether it be doing something you've always wanted to do, then that's the way to, that's the, that'll give you the focus and drive to stop drinking. So I hope these have helped. And I really genuinely do hope these help people. I'm not doing this to make money off. I'm not doing this to sell a book. This is just tips from myself and, and from research that I've done into how you can become successful. People get bogged down in the alcohol addiction groups and AA and things like that. Which they encourage you to think of yourself as a permanent victim with an illness. That's not your fault. Um, it, it's basically, they, they equate it to cancer. I've heard somebody saying it's as, it's, as, it's as dire as a child with cancer. I've actually heard this on some of these support groups. And you think, it's not cancer. It's not as dire as a kid with cancer. It's an adult who's picking up a, a bottle of alcohol and choosing to drink you can't compare it to a child with cancer you can't compare it to people who are suffering with cancer which i see every day it's a choice that's the key take home from this for me i hope these principles help um obviously i'm not saying it's going to solve all your problems watching these videos but i think it gives you a positive but a positive message it gives you you can change everybody is capable of changing habits everybody's capable of changing a life um, i myself just briefly i left school with um two gcse's to my name i was when i was younger i was involved in gangs when i was a teenager i was a boxer and i used to hang around in street gangs and never had any focus whatsoever on school never had any interest in school i joined the forces at 17 i signed up i went in at 18 I served in the forces for just over three years, doing tours of Bosnia and Northern Ireland at that time, in the late 90s. I got out, started again. I um, had a child when I was 21. Um, and I turned my life around. I put myself, me and my wife put me through university. I went back to university as a, as a mature student. So I had to do all my GCSEs again, all my A-levels again. And I'd become a doctor in my late 20s. So you can change, everybody can change. I know people who've gone into medicine at 40, 42. I had a friend who went to medicine at 42 to start a journey into medicine. She's now a consultant in, acute, in a, um, emergency medicine. She's a trauma lead. People can change. That's, that's what you've got to take from this. People can change. Just because you're at rock bottom now, just because you're drinking alcohol every day, it doesn't mean that's you. That doesn't define you as a person. That's not what you are. It's where you are now. It's not what you are. You can change. Everybody can change. Everybody's capable of changing. But you've got to help yourself. Nobody else is going to help you. You're not sick. You haven't got an illness. You're just drinking more than you should be drinking or you're taking drugs when you shouldn't be taking drugs. And this can change. You can turn your life around. If I can turn my life around, if I can become a doctor from speak, leaving school with two GCSEs to my name, 
then anybody can change. Anybody's capable of anything when you put your mind to it. So I hope these videos help. Please keep watching. Please share away. Subscribe to my channel and follow me if you like what you're seeing on this channel. And good luck. Keep on keeping on. And I hope to see you all soon. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.